Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You love music. If you're a true fan, you're going to want to subscribe below so you can be part of this community. We'd love to have you. Celebrating the best of the rock here. We have the feature every single day where we're doing that. Also, an FYI, this week on Patreon, we've done a video behind the scenes of a hilarious few hours that we spent with the late Eddie Money. We did an interview with him. It's great. You're not, you're not going to want to miss it. You can access it by the link below. We also have a little surprise on Patreon that we'll talk about at the end of this. Now, Toto has always been a favorite of mine. The first Toto song I heard was Rosanna when I was six years old. I remember I begged my parents for that song. One day my dad came home with the, the 45 and I must have listened to it a hundred times in that first week. I've had the unique privilege of interviewing both Steve Lukather and David Page three times. And I have to tell you, it's always amazing when the picture that you painted inside your head of a band that you've listened to for years not only matches their live performance, but it also lives up to who they are as people. Luke and Page are two of the nicest guys in the industry. Not only two of the greatest songwriters and players in history, they're also amazing storytellers, always compelling. Here's what they said about the early days of the band. Right? I was in Neil Diamond's Neil band Diamond. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. We formed Toto. Yeah. I had to make a decision. He wanted me to go on the road for 18 months and be his, one of his key guys right there when he made his big comeback. But, uh, you know, uh, it, yeah, was time, it was things. time right. You know, we all had once things we, in the fire. Well, once you know? we were in the band and yeah. we were making all these records for other people, we planned somebody's record and they wanted yeah. us to go on the road. Yeah. But, and that happened a lot with everybody yeah. in the band, really. Yeah. Picaro brothers and your father being in music and well, I got to go back further. Joe. If I hadn't met Steve Picaro, I would have never met any of these guys. Yeah. So I got to, yeah. I got to give a big yeah. nod to high school, Grand High School in the Valley that I went to with some other great musicians, Michael Landau and John Pierce. Yeah. And we had a band together, and, and that's how I met these guys. Yeah. And you know, Jeff was already in Steely Dan. When we were still in high school, so he was already like this magical guy. And Paige was right there with him. So Paige and Jeff were like these two guys yeah. that we wanted to play with and be a part of. And they come play at our high school gigs with us, you know. Yeah, it was a trip. And we learned he, a bunch of those Steely stuff, like Katie Lie before it came out. We were yeah. playing these tunes at, yeah. at high school dances and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I might add, he, Steve was in the middle of the industry too. He's, he came from a legacy. His grandfather worked in movies, and his father worked yeah, in right movies. Yeah, behind the camera. So like, we were all this in this entertainment, in this production, in the Hollywood, mo you know, the whole entertainment thing, music thing. So we were all kind of intertwined, you know. Closely. Showbiz kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Steely Dan, right? For sure, yeah. Jimmy Weibel was your, your teacher, Yes, he too. was. God yeah. bless his soul. He was a very patient man. No, I mean, you know, you start off, I started off playing because of the Beatles and stuff, you know? That was my on switch. Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. Um, and, and, you know, I didn't have any music. There was nobody musical in my family. I thought an alien sperm cell, you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of snuck through there. I don't really understand how that happened. <laughs> Uh, but Lo and uh, behold, he's with Ringo now. Well, I you know, know what I mean? That's what's awesome. Future, you know? Well, it kind of hit, hit me when, when I was invited to do the the Beatles 50th anniversary TV show. To yeah. be part of that all-star band with, with Paul and Ringo. And I'd worked with Paul. We had worked with Paul on the Thriller right. record. Um, that's where we met. That was the first Beatle experience we had. And then I were, met George Harrison. And George came and played with us yeah. at the tribute to Jeff after when Jeffrey passed. We, he came out and jammed with us after, yeah. along with Fagan and... Don Henley and Boz and Mike McDonald and David Crosby and yeah. James Newton Howard and all the bands that, you know, all the people in the band right now. Um, you know, so, and then that, and then Ringo last three years and we've become friends. And, oh, yeah. And he's a magical, wonderful cat and one of the coolest guys I've ever met in my whole life. And so, I mean, yeah. And he likes our music too. So I mean, you know, if it's, you if you look at that and you go, it's, you know, it's a pinch me moment. Yeah. Of you know, dreaming, you know. You know? The fact, no, that we're, sure. the fact that we're still here after these years, I actually I still actually like this guy. Yeah, and I <laughs> love this guy. I love this guy, and I, you know, <laughs> I didn't this know him that well before, me but I records. love this guy right no, here. No, I watched you know? him produce records, and, and he's teaching me how to write ballads. No, it's something no, that's no. that's the Everest no. of writing right, to me is right. to write a ballad. Oh, okay, come on, so anybody can write. Ballad. Oh, just I mean, Africa's and Rosanna's are they're they're good oh, records. Come on. You wrote that song, but Roll they're not real songs. They're not real songs, though. He writes songs, okay. I'm going to yeah. tell him right down in front of everybody. The songwriter. I make records. I'm going to tell make you songs. he's wearing his wife's underwear right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to tell him the truth. That's not true. You know, I'm actually commando today. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I love you. A little bit.
no, no, no. <laughs> no, we're going to save that for our, for our movie, we, our we've documentary. We've never gone there. Okay. We've never, yeah, gone, there. never okay. gone there. We're close. So we're getting close. And that's the thing about these guys is you can definitely feel the respect and the admiration that they have for each other. It's probably why the band has lasted so long. When they put together their blockbuster 1982 album, Total Four, they were locked in as a band. And although their number one hit, Africa, has become the go-to song for the band, and really inspired entire segments of pop culture, I've always felt that it was the second biggest hit from the album, the number two smash, Rosanna, like I said. That was the one that set the bar, a bar so high that Eddie Van Halen himself remarked that Toto was collectively the best musicians on the planet. Roseanne Arquette has caught the attention of millions throughout her extensive acting career. She's had prominent roles in movies like After Hours, Desperately Seeking Susan, uh, Nobody's Fool, New York Stories, just to name a few. Along the way, her magnetism and piercing blue eyes have captivated several rock luminaries, Peter Gabriel being one, even Sir Paul McCartney. And we've talked about it before. Roseanne Arquette was the muse that inspired Peter Gabriel's masterpiece, In Your Eyes. Um, you can see that video we did a couple of months ago. Now, in the early 80s, Arquette was in a romantic relationship with rocker Steve Percaro, coveted keyboardist for Toto, and uh, of course, he's one of the most sought after session musicians uh, of the day. Toto bandmate and fellow virtuoso David Page, who was always searching for real life inspiration to write lyrics and song titles, was working on a tune about a girl that he dug in high school. Since the relationship between Percaro and Arquette was hot and heavy at the time, he decided to title his unnamed song, Rosanna. The rumor was always that, that, that it was about Rosanna Arquette, but you wrote it about... It was about another girl who was my first, first love. Well, Steve she, was dating Rosanna at the she, time. Yes, and all of a sudden she came in. I think everybody in the, that was anybody who met her had a crush on her, and I was no different. When she walked she in, was and I met her. Cute she girl. was cute, she was gorgeous, and I just needed a title. Meet you all the way. And there was, I met her, and I remember just adding her name to the song. Yeah. You gotta come to me if you want the <laughs> real truth. I love it. Rosanna hit all of, we all met her at the same time, especially David and I. I met her at James Newton Howard's wedding and was very much enamored with her, and she was in a relationship. And about a year after that, she was free of the relationship, and we started hanging out. She started coming over to David's house. And we weren't, you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. preordained that she, you know, that we were going to be together. She just was around. We had mutual friends, James Howard and his wife at the time. And uh, and I think everybody was a little enamored with her. You know what oh, I yeah. mean? Yeah. And I think well, it inspired. Well, I mean, Peter Gabriel wrote In Your Eyes about her. Long line of <laughs> Rosanna's been kind of a zealot in that. You know what I mean? Right. With a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Outside of Patty Boyd, maybe the most yeah. written about uh, female in, in pop. He totally wrote it about it. You know what I mean? Like, you <laughs> wrote about it. a girl that you see, you know what I mean, that you first meet. Right, and right. Has... Like all of Toto's instrumental arrangements, Rosanna was created with incredible musicianship. The late Jeff Percaro, one of the greats, if not just one of the greatest drummers ever. Um, Toto's highly acclaimed drummer kicks off the track with a crafty halftime shuffle drum beat that he affectionately called the Rosanna Shuffle. Putting those two beats together, I came up with my own little kind of hybrid. For Rosanna, I added the Bo Diddley figure. It's a shuffle Bo Diddley figure. Basically. And putting them together, this is what it came up with. Jeff Percaro's Rosanna Shuffle is a combination of the syncopated musical rhythm known as the Bo Diddley beat named after the legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Bo Diddley, who popularized the beat. According to Luke and Page, here are more of those influences. We didn't rehearse. rehearse. We never rehearsed our stuff. Yeah. Dave, what do you got? Dave yeah. got, we heard him playing the song. And, and then Jeff goes, well, he, Jeff had been listening to Led Up and Fool on the Hill. That and Bernard Purdy's Babylon System. Yeah. So he sort of did his version of that. I had been listening to, to Panic in Detroit with Bowie, so I wanted this doom 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 Jeff just took one look. He didn't even play that. He tried it about one bar of it and said, no. He goes, let me tell you, this is how this needs to be. 
And he didn't sit down and analyze that like he does on the YouTube thing. He just started playing that. Yeah, yeah he was just right on the spot. We that sound, and then Hongi was there, and we and was, he played the song. We wrote a really quick chord to yeah, it, yeah, and yeah. the second take is what you hear. That's yeah, the record. Yeah, gosh, with the solos and everything. Yeah, Jeff's brother, Super Carl, as I mentioned before, he just delivers a swirling synthesizer interchange in the bridge. That's followed by a tasty Steve Luke of their guitar solo. Luke unleashes another face-melting solo as the track's coup de grace at the end of the extended album version. And that's the only way to listen to this song, the extended version. Now, in addition to the expert musicianship of the respective members of Toto, the recording of Rosanna featured additional all-star talent. Um, there was the revered session player Jerry Hay on trumpet. Chicago's James Panko on trombone, Tom Scott on sax, and Tom Kelly on backing vocals. If it couldn't get any better, Steve Lukather sings the first verse and the third verse of Rosanna, and then he turns lead vocal duties over to the great Bobby Kimball. Let's pause for a second. I want to talk about Bobby Kimball for a little bit here. Um, the power of Bobby Kimball's voice on this song is on par with peak Mike Tyson. I mean, he goes, you know, jab, 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 and then an Iron Mike-like uppercut that puts the fight out of reach, the song out of reach, really. When he sings Rosanna twice, he belts out with a faithful rock ferocity. Bobby Kimball, now, at this moment in time, Toto was truly in their element. In my opinion, they were like the 1927 Yankees or the 93 Chicago Bulls, unbeatable. Their musicianship, their sense of melody, their songcraft, almost unprecedented. And don't forget they had just spent the last five or six years prior, um, and some years after that, playing on thousands of the biggest records um, of all time that collectively have sold over half a billion copies and collectively amassed 225 Grammy nominations. Which, if you think about it by today's standard, is even more astounding because nobody really buys music anymore. People were buying it back then. They're just the greatest, truly. I've said it before. They're really too good for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I believe that. Anyway, the relationship between Percaro and Arquette barely survived the release of Rosanna in the spring of 82 as the couple broke up shortly after the song dropped as the lead single from, again, the epic album Toto 4. But Rosanna, David Page's uh, sentimental composition about a first love, thrived. It really went the distance um, of a golden anniversary beyond that. The song won the Grammy Award for Record of the Year in 83. Really, Toto Four swept the Grammys that year. They won the Grammy for Album of the Year, and the band won the Grammy for Producer of the Year for the collaborative work on the Toto Four album. Just incredible. Um, this was back when the Grammys only had a few categories, too, and now they have you know, tons. But uh, Cynthia Rhodes, who played the part of Penny Johnson in the movie Dirty Dancing, portrayed Rosanna in the music video for Rosanna, which would inspire another iconic music video that would follow, Michael Jackson's Beat It. I read somewhere that, that, that Michael, I don't know if Michael said it or somebody had just said that he kind of, because Beat It had the chain link fence, they had the kind of West Side Story thing. Maybe there was osmosis there. And well, no, we yeah. talked about it at my house. Yeah. Because he wanted to know what, where we got the idea from this. And I said, well, I was trying to do, where Toto was trying to do a kind of a West Side Story thing. And he was fascinated by that because he loved West Side Story and everything. So he went out and did the same thing. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? With the chain link face, the group right. and the, the that gangs iconic, and everything. You know what I mean? That no, that was, we, it was verbally talked about because I was, wow. I think I've been working with the Jacksons well, doing right. the Victory right. album. At my and house I played on the song, so yeah. that was the irony. I know. Cynthia was also one of the lead vocalists for the group Animotion when they had a hit in 89. And was married to Richard Marx for 15 years. She was also the inspiration for uh, Right Here Waiting. Rosanna was indeed a smash hit, though, skyrocketing all the way to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 in the summer of 82. It stayed there for five weeks before it slowed to send down the survey. During its five weeks at number two, though, Rosanna was denied the top spot by two other classic songs, Don't You Want Me by The Human League and Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. 
two of the most popular hits of the 80s and certainly deserving of going all the way to number one, no question. Don't You Want Me kept the number one slot for three weeks and Eye of the Tiger actually doubled that prosperity, keeping the purge for six weeks. I mean, my mind is blown by that though. Can you imagine that top three? Rosanna, Eye of the Tiger, and Don't You Want Me. Sometimes I wish I'd never heard these songs so that I could experience them all over again for the first time. I don't think that, there ever, that there'll ever be another top three like that on the Billboard Hot 100 ever again. It's true. But we're gonna step away from the official chart history and give Rosanna and the members of Toto the honorary Professor of Rock accolade Number one in our hearts. Now, for those of you who would like to see our 10-minute documentary on Rosanna is told by Luke, Paige, and Percaro, it will be on our Patreon site this coming Tuesday morning. Just click on the Patreon link below and you can be a part of that. It's gonna be great. Leave us a comment about Toto and this incredible song. What are your thoughts and memories? I know you have many like I do. You can get Toto's box set, get Toto's music on vinyl, and a CD and their merch below by clicking on our Amazon links. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below to become a part of this community. And if you want more content like this, like I said, more interviews, you can become a patron to help us curate this great history. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.